man. Whoa, hey. Good to see you. Well, this is real special, and I'm really thankful for ACF. Y'all are absolutely beautiful. And thank you for all the tidings and then all your support, because it's really important that we move. This, the situation we're heading into is one of um, that happens once every 100 years. And it's always a cycle that we keep going through. And so this one coming up, same situation we had in the 1860s, right, right around the 1900s, when we began with World War I, World War II, one after the other. So we're heading into the same thing. So could we have a nuclear, uh, nuclear exchange? Absolutely. Because it wouldn't, because the cycle is still the same. We still have the same cycles. So here we go this time. The problem is we have a lot more involved because the might that is available is much greater than anything before. So that the chance of devastation is really high. So it has nothing to do with watching to leadership. It's just that God cannot affect anything on Earth without us being a part of his plan, seeing from God's perspective. And if we choose not to, we want to go our own way like everybody else thinks they are, that's great, but God has no impact on the earth. Do you understand? No impact whatsoever. Because God can't work through people who don't have the same heart, same thoughts, same images, don't see from God's perspective. They have their own ideas, their own thoughts. Like I know that's what the word, you hear it all the time. I know that's what the word of God says, but, right, and that's where the problem comes in. So what I'm going to share tonight is, how many saw the last one? Others. You all see others? Okay. Not seeing others, I mean the video others. <laughs> well, this is kind of like part two of that. So it should be a real blessing to everybody. So Father, thank you right now for helping me to teach, to build the greatness of your word and the hearts of your people, that they may truly see themselves from your perspective and to see each other, to really walk forth in this day and time and glorify you, standing in your shadow and walking in the footsteps of your firstborn from the dead are risen and return, Lord Jesus, your anointed. Okay, so we're going to start off with something really, really strange. Me. <laughs> well, that's true, too, but okay. On this side, well, I'm not going to pass it around to everybody. I'm just going to give it to you. Here, why don't you look at that? This, what I'm doing, I'm giving you light. All right, this is light I'm giving you. Okay, pass it to the person in the back. All right, pass it. I'm giving what I'm done is I'm giving you light. Okay, pass it, pass it. Come on, no, that's okay. You guys are good. Okay, and the other side, got it? No, they're not. Yeah, they're the same. Okay, got it? Okay, good. All right, so now what you saw. All right, now tell me what you see. Old lady or old young lady? Old or young? How many say old? All right, Eric says old. All right, is it old or young? Young. How many say old? Oh, okay, there. See, so what's the situation here? The sheets I passed you out were very, very similar, except one emphasized one than the other. This one's balanced. They're identical. This, th th there's no difference here because not only do you have the chin, the mouth, the face, the nose, it's the old lady, or is it the young lady? You see, it's not so much what you see as what, you, what kind of light or how, how you're perceiving something not how it is. And this is what people understand because they believe their lens in which they're looking. At. Yes? Okay. They believe their lens is the correct lens. And it has nothing to do with people. It has nothing to do with anybody's lens. What does the word say? The word gives us the proper perspective. So this is really important to grasp what I'm about to teach you. And every time you talk to somebody, it's not so much that they're right or wrong or you're right or wrong. It's what does the what? The words say. One of the greatest Latin phrases there is is uh, scriptura sacra sui ipsuis interpretes, which means the Bible interprets itself. It doesn't, it's not for anyone else to interpret it. So we have to let the Bible interpret what? Itself. 
So we're going to begin, once I turn this on, which would be really clever. All right. But understand, nobody is seeing anything clearly. Nobody. The only one that sees things clearly sees the past, the present, and the future is who? God. So we have some really unique phrases here. The subject matter of this is light that is darkness. That sounds weird. You mean a dark light? No, that's during the 70s, and that's not what we're talking about. Light that is not light, light is darkness. That's the problem. All right. So where do I get this from? Where's where that in the Bible? Well, it's in Luke 11, 34, and 36. Remember I told you the first gospel was what? Luke. All right. The light of the body is the what? The eye. Which one? The left or the right? No, that's not any eye. All right, all right, now, once you go back, I want you to stop and think, close your eyes, go back to, your, to where, you, where you slept. Everybody in your mind, everybody see it? You see the room you slept in? See your bed? You see your bed? You don't see your bed? You see your bed? Okay, see your bed? You can even do it with your eyes open, right? You can see your bed. You can see your closet, right? You can even see what's on the floor. Right? You, you can see. But where are you seeing it? Which eye are you seeing it with? Neither one. It's all in your what? Mind. So it's how many eyes do you see it in your mind? There's only one eye, and that's your mind. So that's that one eye. The light of the body is the eye, the single eye. How you perceive something. Therefore, when thy eye is single, which means that, that mental image is single with what? Single with what? The word single means with alignment or one. So being one with what? You know, and the, the subject matter is being one with God, seeing it from whose perspective? God's. The whole body, your whole life, is full of what? Light. Again, we have this word light, light. But when thy eye is evil, now what's evil? Remember back to Proverbs? Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, lean not to thine own understanding, and all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from what? Evil. Evil is being right in your own eyes. Take heed, therefore, that the light which is in thee be not what? Darkness. So if thy eye is evil, thy whole body, your whole life is filled with what? Darkness. Why? Because it's not single, one with God. You're seeing it from, from your limited perspective of reality. You can't see the future. You've got all kinds of emotions, so you're going to interpret everything. And it's just like the old lady, young lady. Which one is it? Take heed, therefore, that the light that is in thee. Now, why does it say light? Because if this whole room was dark, if I turned the lights off, right, and it was like, no, it's just nothing but darkiness, right? Right. So what would you see? Nothing, right? She got that right. There'll be nothing to see. But a little bit of light, and you start making things out, right? Not making out, that's the difference. I mean, you can make things, you can perceive things that are there. That way, even with a dull flashlight, you can still kind of see things, right? Okay. So take heed, therefore, that the light that is in thee be not what? Darkness. So if the images you're getting don't conform to the word, oh, that light that you're perceiving things with is called darkness. It's a light that is not light. It's what? Darkness. That's why it's the warning. It's one of the few warnings that are in the Gospels. Which is what, this is the problem with James. James was the one that turned the whole ministry against the Apostle Paul. Because of this. This is what made Jesus lose over three quarters of his disciples. Was because of this. This right here is what's wiping out people in this day and time, when they should be protected. Because the light in which, which they have and they're perceiving things is not accurate. If the whole body therefore be full of light, that's the light that is single with one, with God, having no part dark, the whole shall be full of light, and when the bright shining of a candle doth give thee light, as when a bright candle. Isn't that beautiful? So, what we know, we want this, is what is this word? We say light. We understand that light gives us the ability to see things. There's no light. We don't see anything, right? How many can see in the dark? I can't. 
How many have tried to walk around in the dark using your magnificent mind and your memory? I got all kinds of bruises on my shin from drawing that. Oh, oh, smack, right? Because we need light to be able to perceive things. Okay, so we need to know what is, to me, this bit more accurate, what is light, right? Because the Bible should, what? Tell us, right? Huh? Okay. So the first place we hear the word light is in Genesis. Does everybody know where Genesis is? You know where Genesis is? You know where Genesis is at, right? Where, where is it at? In the beginning, yeah, right. So, and God said, let there be light, and there, and of course that word was, is of course the word ayah, which is became. And God saw the light that it was good. So God saw, and that word saw is examined. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Now, we understand, we saw the, does we see the word light here? See the word, the word light? See it? Okay, do you see it now? No, no. <laughs> do you see it? <laughs> okay, that, what is that? How many have seen light? You've seen light? How many have seen light today? Nobody's seen light? Have you seen light? Yeah. <laughs> All right. What is, we have it right now? You have it? Can you see it in the room? Light? That's not what this is talking about. It's not what we're talking about. How do I know? Because, notice that this says, what day did this light come into be? First day. All right? If we didn't have electricity, right? We didn't have, how many, you know what I'm talking about? Electricity, right? Had no electricity, no LED lamps, no flashlights, going back to the time of Christ. They didn't have that stuff. Just had what? Candles, right? Candles and fire, right? Fire, right? What else would? But that's man-made. The only light they had besides that was the sun and the, and the stars and the moon, right? And when did they come into being? Well, in Genesis 1, 14 through 19, and God said, let there be lights in the firmament of heaven to divide the day from the night. Let it be for signs and for seasons, for days and years. Let them be for lights in the firmament of heaven to give light, there's the word light again, upon the earth. And it was so. This is physical light. God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, which would be the law? The sun, not the father, the sun. Right? <laughs> and the lesser light to moon, to moon. <laughs> I got mooned. Anyway, let's light to moon, moon the night. <laughs> wow. Let's light to rule the night which he made and the what? Stars. So what's this one talking about? The moon, right? I almost gave it away, right? I got moon tonight, right? All right. He made the stars also. So we have the day, which is the sun, the night, which is the moon, and the stars, what? Also. And God set them a permanent. So what day is this? Is this the first day? Is it the second day? Is it the third day? Is it, what day is this? And God set them in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth. This is physical light again. To rule over the, over the night and day and divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. The word it was is in italics. Should be that it's good. God judged it, saw it, bang. Just like if I sat back there and said, all right, give me seven inches. I want the ruler, right? All right. Very good. So if you gave me seven inches, give me seven inches. Give me seven inches. See, now I'm going to measure this, right? I'm going to examine it. That's six. Now we got seven, okay. So aren't you glad we used the ruler? All right, so now I examined it, and I say it is what? Good, that's right. You're good. Okay, very good. So we got this. This is like really, really important. Okay, <clears throat> so whenever God says good, it's because it... He had the image in his mind, and he matched it, and it's good. And the evening and the morning were the first day. No, second day. No, third day. Uh-uh. What day is this? Fourth day. So there's no physical light before the fourth day. Now, I'm not talking about geological. I'm, talking, I'm not talking about, you know... Um, different empirical evidences. I'm not, we will be covering that. But I want you to understand from God's list of priorities, it's set as the fourth day. Got it? 
So there's, this is the physical light. So there's no way in blue blazes that light could be this stuff that's, that's coming out and shining our way. It's not talking about that. God's not talking about physical light in Genesis uh, chapter 1, verse 3. The light of Genesis 1, 3 on the first day is not the same light here. So what are we talking about? Because this light is different in Genesis 1, 3. It's totally different. This is physical light on the fourth day. Got it? How many have ever seen that before? How many were aware of this? Genesis 1, 3 through 5. And God said, let there be light, and there became light. And God saw the light that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness, and God called the light day, darkness he called night. This light is not the same physical light. This is in 1, 3. Got it? Not the same. Now here that word there is again examined. Ra. Examine or discern like she did. Or I did concerning her. What was God examining and where was he examining it in this verse? If it's not light he's examining, then what is he examining? And where is he examining at? Because if he's examining all the other things, he, he saw these are things, you know, the fishes and the earth and the water. It, it's good. But here, light, it's not light, physical light, because that didn't happen until the fourth day. So why are we talking about it? It's something that God examined and said it is good. So we go, all right, that makes no sense. And the answer is yes, it do. You're wondering about these things? You do? Okay, cool. I wake up in the morning like that. You know. What is my name? All right, anyway, no, I'm joking. All right. So what was God examining? Because when he says he examined it, it, it's not light. So what is he examining? And, and if he's examining it, where is he examining it at? I, I wake up with these perplexing concepts. People say, Frank, I wish I knew it. No, you don't want to know what's in my mind. No, you don't. You don't know what my brain's working on. It scares me half the time, all right? So we got it. Is this easy? Now we can all go home, right? No, Frank. <laughs> Man was found dead today. No, understand, you want me to, you want me to teach you this? Does it sound interesting, provocative? All right, let's go. Now, we got to know where can God examine this, right? So... They, Jeremiah 19.5, they have built also high places of Baal to burn their sons with fire for burnt offerings on the Baal. Well, what? Where did they get that idea from? Which I commanded not. Well, if God didn't command it, where did they get the idea? Nor spoke, nor it even came into my mind, God says. So we see three parts of God's knowledge and wisdom. Number one, it's either he commanded it, he spake it, or it's in his what? When it says that God chose you before the foundations of the world, where did he see you at? His mind. He didn't see you living up in the clouds and that other <laughs> crap. God has a mind. God doesn't have a body, but he does have a what? A mind. So, is this all making sense? Okay, good. So God commands, or he speaks, or if God hasn't spoken it or commanded it, it's still in his what? Mind. There's a lot of things he's got in his mind he has not revealed yet. And I'm glad, because I, my brain would probably pop. All right. <laughs> you joke, joking. You laugh? All right. He thought it through in his mind before he began. He thought it through the whole thing, the whole enchilada, right? From the beginning to the what? God sees the end from the what? Beginning. He saw the end from the beginning. That's what it says. God saw the end from the beginning. And that's where he saw the end from the beginning. Right there. When he said, it is good. All right? Looks all the plan, all the details, everything involved. And said, it's good. That's what we're talking about. That's light. 
Seeing the things that are not as if they what? Are. And they what? Become. He thought through his plan before he spoke. Spork? Sporked? That's not a word. Spoke. Spoke. That's right. He thought through his plan before he spoke or commanded. Got it? He saw from the beginning to the what? To the end. God sees the things before from the beginning to the end. And the ability to see the plan from the beginning to end requires what? Light. That's intense. To see something, you've got to have what? Light. Is this all making sense? If you were to go back home in your mind right now and turn off the light, what would you see? You, you wouldn't see anything. And so that's why when you go somewhere in your mind, it's all lit up. But if someone tells you, oh, by the way, a car ran into the front of your house, now when you go back in your mind, you, you, you imagine that car that ran into your house, you're trying to figure out how it and it ended, entered, entered it, uh, crashed in, right? Does that make sense? Because someone told you, gave you additional light, and now you add that light to your image. Light is very crucial to see anything. I can see my poem, see? That's from the... <laughs> has nothing to do with the candle, that's just the screen. But in the Jesus' time, if you want to give light, and it's nighttime, you have a what? Candle. There's only two places to get fire at the time of Jesus Christ, and that was either a fire or a candle. That's why you see him speak about the fire or speak of the candle. He didn't speak about LEDs or, you know, flashlights or like that, or batteries. He didn't, didn't have it. Got it? So that means we're superior. Uh, no. <laughs> All right, Proverbs 2, 6. For the Lord giveth wisdom. Out of his mouth cometh knowledge and what? Understanding. Now, these, this is the menu we can get from God. This is God's menu. Go to McDonald's restaurant. Can't walk in there. I like a fish taco. Ate on the what? Maybe, maybe you can really intimidate them, say, you better give it to me. But they're not going to, you know, they're not going to give it to you. I want a pizza. Sorry, it's not on the menu. What's on the menu with God? Out of his mouth cometh what? So God gives what? Wisdom. Out of his mouth cometh knowledge and what? Understanding. There we go. Wisdom, knowledge. That's all that's on the menu. That's all you can get from God. Oh, God, give me a new job. Oh, God. No, he'll give you knowledge or wisdom or what? Help me find a new job. Then he'll give you that. God's not going to, you know. Understanding is given by what? Light. To have light is to know God's purposes and will, to be one with him. Walking in the light is to think and act in accordance with his will and purposes as given in the New York Times. No, given in television. No, given in his what? His word. Proverbs 3.5. Now, here's where the interesting component comes in. So there's God's light, but is there any other light? We know there's God's light, and being one with it is the best, but is there another light? If you look at the time of Christ, you know, and all the sources of light, there was the stars, there was the moon, the sun, and then there was the man-made light, which was fire, right? And that was one of his, that man makes. So God compares the sources of light with what God gives as compared to what man what gives. So in Proverbs 3, 5, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thy own what? Understanding. Now that un not thy own what? Understanding. How many of you have ever been disappointed from what you thought? You had this image of something and then when you got it, it was like, that's it? That's all there is? Isn't there more? Nope. Nobody but me? You too? Okay, yeah. You had this image like, one of these days I'll have this or I'll do it and everything will be wonderful. Well, it doesn't work like that. You have to get in like, that's it? There's nothing more? Nope. You ever had that experience? Remember when we thought when, and the, the biggest thing my mother always thought, she thought when she got kids, their kids would love her and adore her. <laughs> we turned out to be monsters. 
And she's like, ah! Because she thought, well, one day I'll have kids and they'll be worshipped and loved. And no, not when you start off with a boy. <laughs> you know, understand, people have these concepts that are not part of what? Reality. Uh, like, one day I'll get married and live happily ever after. No, it doesn't work like that. It's hard work from the day one. Did you, what was you like when you were told you were going to get married? What was it going to be like? What did you think it was? Huh? Has it been peaceful? <laughs> See, we all have these concepts of what it's like on something when we get it and when we receive it, and it, it's distortion. And most of it, the light, these images we're getting are illuminated by what people tell us. Got it? And that can distract, distort what really is there so we see it from their perspective. So you get married and you live happily ever after. No, it's only the beginning. It's only the beginning. <laughs> Isaiah 50, verse 11, very important verse. Nobody understands it. Nobody talks about it. People run from it, but it's really simple. Isaiah 50, 11. Behold all ye the kindle of fire. We're back. Now, what's fire? A source of what? Light. All right. Fire is a source of what? Light. light right. That's man-made light, correct? All right. Behold, all you that kindle a fire that compass yourselves about with sparks. Walk in the light of your what? There it is. Walking in the light of your own what? Your own fire. Now, what is this all about? Well, every, every time about... About 4 o'clock in the morning, all the men would go out to the field. And they'd all have this, this, this coil of rope around them. And they'd all go out to the field. But before they did, they all got together around, around a, a campfire. You can still see this in Malaysia, Indonesia, still in Asia. And they would take the tip, and they'd put it in the fire. And that thing would catch fire, and they'd blow it out. And then they would use it like this. And it would throw sparks in, in their, at their path. And then they could see at 4 o'clock in the morning, it's still dark. And so they would just, just do this and walk along. And if there were scorpions or vipers, you'd see them. And, of course, the spark would land on them and they'd shoo, scurry away. But there's also thorns, big thorns. All the plants have thorns. And you got to watch it and stick your foot because all you got is sandals on. right? So it's pretty rough. Because, oh, I wish you could live back then. We are so wimpy we wouldn't survive. <laughs> So, and, and then the sparks that ye have kindled. So it's the fire that you made and the sparks that you've kindled. This shall you have in my hand. You shall lie down in sorrow. So compared to God-made light, there's man-made light. Got it? Man-made light. His own light. His own experiences. His own perception. That's the problem. So I, I, I got this. A guy who's actually got a rope. And he, instead of doing it like this, he's doing it like this. I right? know, like, whatever. It'll still give you the idea. It throws out sparks, and it gives you light under the ground. Not a lot, but it gives you enough. And it lasts as long as the rope is long. Does that make sense? So, understanding that people have their own light, and they will lay down in what? Sorrow. Because they don't get the whole picture. They don't get the whole thing. Now, here we, before this account here in Numbers, chapter 16, there's, Moses was being worn out, everybody coming to him for help and help. So what he did is he talked to his father-in-law, which is Jethro, who was the Midianite, and, and he said, you know, God has shown me that you need to, you know, find 70 men, the best there is, and God will put his spirit off of, uh, on you, from you onto them so they share the same spirit you got. So he went to God and God verified it. So God told him to go out there and, and all the 70 got together. And God took the spirit that was on Moses and parsed it out to the other 70. He didn't get less, same amount, but he gave it to the 70. So now they had the same spirit that what? Moses had. They could do what Moses did, but they didn't have the right heart. And they didn't have the right light. And I'm going to prove it to you. Watch for the light. Now Korah, the son of Esar, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi, and Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Elab, and On, the
the son of Peleth, the sons of Reuben, and took men, and they rose up before Moses with certain of the children of Israel. These are all the best. These are the ones that had the spirit. They're the ones that are most powerful and influential. They rose up before Moses with certain of the children of Israel, 250 princes of the assembly, famous in the congregation, men renowned. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron and said unto them, You take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy. Why is that? Because they all got the spirit. Now they're equal to or even superior to Moses. How would they come to this conclusion? Because they're walking in different what? Light. They're seeing something that's not correct. I mean, empirically it's correct, but it, it's not aligned with God. <sighs> seeing all the congregation holy, every one of them, and the Lord is among them. Okay, yeah. But that's not who God put in charge. Wherefore then lift yourselves up above the congregation of the Lord. Sounds good. But is it? Who did God put in charge? Moses. And when Moses heard it, he fell upon his face. He got clumsy. No, he, <laughs> he bowed himself to them, right? Showed them honor and respect because they're God's people. And he spoke on the Korah and said unto his company, saying, even tomorrow the Lord will show who are his and who is holy, and will cause him to come near unto him, even whom he hath chosen, he, come, he caused to come unto him. This do, take you censors, Korah, all your company, and put fire therein. Now the only one supposed to do this is who? Moses and Aaron. That's it, period. But no, Korah's going to join in on the, on the chorus here. Everybody thinks they, they're equally or superior. Put incense then before the Lord, Tomorrow, and it shall be that the man whom the Lord does choose, he shall be holy. You take too much upon you, see, your sons of Levi. So this is rather interesting. What's wrong with these men? Nothing. They're just seeing from a different what? Light. Number 16, 8 through 12. I mean, I spent time in prisons. Not that I got in trouble. I went there to help. But the problem with everybody in prison is that they've done nothing wrong. And these are murderers, these are people with assault, these are people with robbery, and they've done, they believe they did absolutely nothing wrong. And yet I ask them for the details, and their details are correct, but their interpretation is totally wrong. And Moses said to Korah, Here I pray you, you sons of Levi, seemeth it a small thing unto you that the God of Israel has separated you up from the congregation of Israel to bring you near to himself, to do the service of the tabernacle of the Lord, to stand before the congregation and minister unto them. And he hath brought thee near to him and all the brethren, the sons of Levi, with thee, and seek ye the priesthood all. What is your problem? <laughs> For which cause that thou and all thy company are gathered together against the Lord? And what is Aaron that you murmur against him? Moses sent to call Dathan and Abiram, you know, the sons of Elab, which said, we are not going to come up. We're not going to come. We're not going to listen to you. We're not going to even pay attention to you. And they're like, what? Now, now here's their, their, they're going to speak the facts from their perspective. This is the light they're seeing things from. So here's what the sons of Elab said. Is it a small thing that thou hast brought us out of the land that floweth with milk and honey? What's he talking about? Egypt. Egypt was flowing with money, with money, with milk and money, milk and honey. That's where we get money from, milk and honey put together, money. No. <laughs> flowing with milk and honey. What, what's the situation here? Is that true? Was Egypt a land flowing with milk and honey? No. They were slaves, but they don't remember that part. To kill us in the wilderness? Well, that's a strange way of looking at it, but it does appear that way. You can look at it that way. <laughs> Except thou make thyself altogether a prince over us. Moreover, thou hast not brought us in the land to flow with, with milk and honey. Okay. Did he take them right off the bat into Canaan? And they said, we'd rather die. So he said, okay, back out. Or give us an inheritance of fields and vineyards. You haven't done it yet. 
Will thou put out the eyes of these men? What? We will not come up. Okay. How could they get this? Because there's empirical evidence that could support it. It does. If you look, read the accounts, like you could interpret it that way, right? They're interpreting it according to that light. Everybody is not seeing things accurately. Everybody is interpreting it. Everybody, nobody is seeing things as they are. Everything is modified, altered, changed by our emotions as we have when we perceive things. What preconditions us to see things a certain way? Guard against that now. The media is in charge. They will try and control and influence all decisions you make. We have a real challenge for the elites because we have 8 billion people and they plan to bring back to, to bring us back to around the 1900s because we're not going to have any petroleum. So they need to reduce the population down to 3 billion. That's exactly how they look at it. So every plan that they have is to reduce through the media, through movies, television, everything, is to bring the population what? Down. So... It's not what you see, it's how you are, what light you're seeing it in. Is that making sense? These men are not seeing things wrong, they're just seeing it in the wrong what? Light. Is that making sense? Everybody gets tricked in this thing. There's no con artist that couldn't take somebody unless he could influence their perception. Criminals, same way. Moses was very wroth and said unto the Lord, Respect not their, t their offerings. I have not taken one ass from them, neither have I hurt any of them. And especially how they said, you're going to take out our eyes? Come on. This is all emotional. So what are they doing? They're speaking from their own what? They're caught in a loop. Everybody's seeing things worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. And they look backward at Egypt, and it was a land flowing. They were slaves. They were being beaten. They were being put to death. No, it was the land flowing with... Well, all right, go back to Egypt. No one's stopping you. You understand the problem? Nothing you see is, is correct. You have to verify what you see. Whatever you, whatever you see, believe half of what you see and even less of what you hear. It's not true. Especially now with AI. Whoa. They can make anything for you. Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak on the congregation, saying, Get you up from about the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. Moses went up and went on to Dathan and Abiram, and the elders of Israel followed him. And he spoke on the congregation, saying, Depart, I pray you, from the tents of these wicked men. Touch nothing of theirs, lest you be consumed in all their discrepancies. This, that trespasses. Counter God. The devil doesn't have... Have you noticed the devil doesn't see God, see the things the way God sees them? Have you ever noticed that? He sees it totally what? Differently. So you either see from God's perspective or you see it differently. So they're seeing this whole situation differently than God and Moses and Aaron. And they're upset because they are seeing it that way. This, this makes it the light and the what? Darkness. That what they're seeing with is dark light. You see it? Dark light. So they got up from the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Abraham on every side. Dathan and Abraham came out and stood at the door of their tents, their wives, their sons, and their little children. And Moses said, Hereby you shall know that the Lord has sent me to do these works, for I have not done them of my own what? Mind. Why is the word mind there? Why does it say my own heart or my own soul? Why does it use the word mind? Because it's all dealing with mind. Your perception, how you act, how you respond. Don't you ever wonder why it says mind, not my own heart? Because mind is where it all begins. All your actions, your response, how you respond to things is all dealing with your mind. How are you perceiving it? What kind of light is shining to determine what you see? It doesn't make any sense. I'm giving you the secret to what's going on right now. A lot of things that are being said are not true. And people are believing a lot of stuff that isn't true. 
and they're suffering the consequences. Moses asks, if these men die the common death of all men, or if they be visited the visitation of all men, then the Lord has not sent me. But if the Lord make a new thing, and the earth open her mouth, and swallow them up with all that appertaineth unto them, and they go down quick into the pit, then you shall understand that these men have provoked the Lord. Well, how can you provoke the Lord? By countering him, saying that which is opposite what he said. And it came to pass, as he made an end of speaking all these words, that the ground clave asunder that was under them. And this recently happened, by the way. It happened in Turkey. It happened in several places where the ground just opened up and everybody fell inside. That really sucks when you don't know. There, there's What happens is, I don't know what a stinkhole, a sink, a sinkhole is, right? Where all, all, all the ground around a certain area and then all of a sudden everything just caves in. Well, the last earthquake was really a bummer because 50 people fell in and then it collapsed on them. This is like, this is, that doesn't happen so much in North America or like South America per se, but it happens a lot in the Middle East. So this is um, a really sad situation. How many here would like, don't need God, that you can walk without God's protection? Anyone here want to think like that? Not me. All right, so I kind of like walking with God. It makes it healthy. <laughs> it makes it worthwhile. Anyway, and swallowed them up, and their houses, and all the men that pertained on the core, all their goods, they and all that pertained on went down alive into the pit, and the earth closed upon them, and they perished from among the congregation. And all of Israel that were round about them fled at the cry of them. For they said, least the earth swallow us up also. Why? Were they, what were they thinking? The same what? The same thing. And they didn't want to get caught in the same what? Consequences. And there came down a fire from the Lord. And God didn't send it. God allowed it. One of the things that come out from, from when the earth opens up is a lot of what? Gas. Flammable gas. And what are they all holding? Sensors. They go boom. Fire. And they came out of fire from the Lord, God allowed, and consumed the 250 men. The least they could have done was drop their sensors. But anyway, really dumb. Right now, I'm going to ask you, what do you see? That's the word what, right? Like in, you know, what's. You know what this is? All right. There's a, there's a light over here that's orange, right? It's French for orange. Orange, right? Then there's the light over here that's teal. Isn't that cute? Teal? All right, anyway, light goes this way and produces a circle. Light comes over here and produces a square. What's the object in the center? Or are you, a, how many here are circle people saying it's a circle? All right, she's a circle person. What are you? Square or circle? Um, well, what, what's the object? Huh? Oh, you already know? Yeah. Shut up. <laughs> Spoiled it. Well, the object is, if you know both sides, right, and you can see that that's a square and that's a circle, what in the heck is in the middle? It's pretty obvious, right? There it is. Light coming from this way makes a circle. Light coming from this way makes a square. Got it? So there's two. It's not that this is... Now understand, every evidence you see, everything that happens in the world, can always be interpreted by what light you put on it. It could be negative or what? Positive. It could be left or right. It could be... You know, liberal, conservative, it doesn't make any difference. I don't want to know people's perspective. I want to know what the facts are. The facts are light hits here, I get an orange square. Light hits here, I get a blue. So obviously it has to be a... I'm sorry, louder? A cylinder. A cylinder, right. It has to be a cylinder. It has to be. Because you light goes this, it gives you a what? Square. square. Light goes this way, it gives you a circle. Got it? So just the fact that these are too dissimilar does not mean it's, that doesn't explain what's there. If you know that these are both accurate, then there only has one conclusion. It has to be something that emits both these with different light. Does that make sense? 
So every time you hear people say one thing and a person saying just the opposite, they're both looking at the same evidence but getting different what? Results. And you got to stay in the middle. Don't get caught on one side or the other. It's not what is seen, but by which light and lens is it being seen. Got it? Is this important? Yes. So what would you say spiritually is the light? Wisdom is the what? The light. Knowledge is, is evidence, right? Wisdom is applied. So when you're looking at understanding, light, wisdom is given to you how to accomplish that at the end. The goal. You don't need knowledge. You need how to apply the knowledge to get to the goal. And that's what call, that is what gives you light. You can't go. You ever heard the story about the guy? They're all racing down the tunnel. And as they do, it's all dark and they're racing. I know it's down here. I know it's down here. All of a sudden, they see a light at the tunnel. And everybody starts crying out. Why? It's a light at the end of the tunnel. No, it's a train. No. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, bad joke. That was a joke, 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 joke. <laughs> so the light, if you're trying to do something, you need light to see. There was a, um, a swimmer that used to swim across the English Channel, right? And she would swim from France to England or from England to France, and she would swim across that. And she had, she had the record. She was the most extraordinary swimmer. But one day there was a fog, and she couldn't see the other side, and she gave up. Because the fog blocked the what? The light to her destination. You understand? So when, and she had to be taken out. I mean, not taken out. I mean, so, <laughs> I mean, she had to be taken out of the water, right? They had a boat standing by. All right. Watch too many movies. Okay. <laughs> All right. You understand how, how this works. Okay. So what gives you, what changes your perception? What gives you different light? Remember, fire is one, a source of what? Light. light. And in Bible times, light is, fire is a source of light. All right, so keeping that in mind, you can have God's light. How many fire, how many destructions are there from sun's light or the moon's light? Or this, no, nothing gets damaged. But when you're talking about man's light, fire, we got a problem. And what causes that fire? The tongue. Does everybody know what a tongue is? <laughs> Let me see your tongues. All right, everybody show me God's tongue. Okay. All right, don't show me your tongues. <laughs> Put that, I wouldn't keep that thing in my mouth either. All right, anyway. <laughs> now here's James, right? And the tongue is a fire where you, a source of what? Light. Where you get your life from. A world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body. Setteth on fire the course of nature, and is set on fire of hell. So everything just goes right to hell in a handbasket. Because someone said something and made people see from a different what? Perspective. Gave them different light. And they saw it wrong for every beast of the, every kind of beast and birds and serpents of things in the sea is tamed and hath been tamed to mankind but the tongue a lingua right <laughs> can no man tame is an unruly what evil what's evil going by one's own intellect and what emotions, emotions. there it is again full of deadly poison Therewith we bless God, even the Father, and therewith we curse men, which are made in the similitude of God, those that have the Spirit. So we're talking about what God's people are doing to each other. Out of the same mouth proceed blessings and what? Cursings. My brethren, these things ought not to be so, that the fountain sent forth both the same place, sweet water and bitter. Nope. Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries? Either a vine figs, if it's got grapes, does it bring forth figs? So can no fountain both yield salt water and what? Fresh. 
Salt water will kill you if you drink it, by the way. So what's the problem? People are using their own light, their own emotions, or what someone gave them as light to see things. To, oh, I never saw it that way. Now I see, right? Did you hear about this? No, I didn't hear about that. Oh my gosh. Oh, I didn't see it that way before. Yeah, you gave them different what? Light. I'm not interested in what people think. I'm interested in where are the facts. Just give me the facts. I'll assemble it. And I'll use the Word of God as my what? Standard. If it doesn't fit the standard, it's not good. And you discard it. Got it? James 3, 13 and 18. Who is a wise man? Also includes women. And endued with knowledge among you. Let him show it out of a good conversation. What's knowledge? That's God's word. What's wisdom? Applying it. Let him show out of a good conversation his attitude, his, what he says of his works with meekness of what? Wisdom. In other words, when you hear it, you examine what you feel and what you're about to say with what the word says. And what do you do? Throw away the world. I know that's what the word of God says, but... I got to get people angry. I got to be upset. I'm like, no. But if you have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not. Lie not against the truth. What's the truth? The word. the word. Do people lie against the truth? Why? Because their emotions are more important than the word. And the adversary's emotions are more important than the word, too. And everybody that he works with. And Cora's emotions were more important than the word. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensuous, only deal with the senses, feelings, and is of the devil. For we were envying, for where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. And that's just the way it works. People like to set other people on fire emotionally, and that clouds their judgment, and they see things in the wrong light. No matter what it is, cast, that's that compassing yourself with your own sparks. But the wisdom that is from above, what could, where could you find that? Where do you find wisdom from above? All right, let me try again. Where do I find wisdom from above? All right, there we go. It's first what? Pure. Then what? Peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated. You don't get any, I'm sorry, no emotional upheaval here. No anger, none of that stuff. Full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without what? Hypocrisy. Then what's this stuff? Filled with hypocrisy, filled with partiality, no good fruits, no mercy. <laughs> can't add, can't do anything about it. Not gentle, it's grass, abrupt, rude. And it's irritating and frustrating. So I'm just going backwards. And people prefer that to this. That makes no sense to me. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in the peace of them that make what? Peace. That can only be done with the word. Seeing things from God's perspective. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of who? Of God. Which things also we speak, not in the wor words which men's wisdom teach us. Why is that a problem? Not using these words. Because these way, this is all emotions. Men's perspective, men's light. Not interested in that. What does the word say? But which the whole, okay, not which men's wisdom teaches, but with the Holy Ghost, that's Holy Spirit, Pneumahagion teaches. Comparing spiritual things with what? Spiritual, no yawning. Okay. <laughs> but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are what? Foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually what? They can't, oh, I'm not getting emotionally upset and angry. Give me something to get me upset and angry. Wrong God, wrong God. Sorry, that's not what it's all about. 
You're not supposed to be irritated, frustrated, angry. No, 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 no. God can't work with you in that state. But he that is spiritual, what's he in that? That's where he's peaceable. He's at ease. He's, with, he's thinking is with God. Judges all things, yet he himself is judged by no man. No one has the right to judge anyone else. I don't judge anybody. I just tell them what the word says. So everybody is right in their own what? They have their own light that they are coming to the object and what they're seeing. Whichever light they're coming from. The question is, what light do you want to come from? How do you want to perceive things? There are consequences and rewards accordingly. Does that make sense? So let's go back to our first part. See, we can understand now what it was talking about. The light of the body is the eye. Does this make sense now? How are you perceiving things? How is, how is it what you're seeing is valued? How are you perceiving it? How, how is it balanced? The light of the body is the eye. In your mind, how are you seeing it? Now, I know one person that saw a, um, a Mercedes, you know, and it was, one of the, the, with the gold wing doors, 350. He's like, oh, my dream car. And the other guy goes, ah, it's a piece of shit. Right. The two guys seeing the same thing, each had different what? Di different perception of seeing it. They're both seeing the same thing, and each one gave a completely opposite response. Take someone to see like an EV, right? Oh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be caught dead in an EV. I wouldn't be caught in an ice vehicle. Now we got two separate what? Yet they're still looking at the same thing. One says, this is crappy. The other one says, no, man, it's the future. The guys, you're full of, you know, whatever. And they, get, they can even get into a big fight over it. So it's not that either one of them is wrong. It's just that they're seeing things from a different what? They're, they have a different light, right? And they're seeing it from a different perspective. Where are they seeing it at? They're seeing it, and they put it in their what? Mind. And they compare their value systems with it, and it turns out either good or bad. I mean, or I'm sorry, bad or good. Right? Does that make sense? You and I walk in. How many of you went shopping? No? Okay, that's cool. You go shopping. I can't imagine a woman going shopping. Anyway, so you go shopping. What do you see? You look at something, you go, oh, it's on sale. But when you grab it, you go, now, now what you do is you put it in your mind and say, well, what's it really worth? What's it really worth? And if it's not really worth what the sale is, then you don't what? So you take it and you put it in your mind and you compare it to something of equal value and say, really, is that a sale? Is that a benefit? And you don't buy it if it's not. Yes or no? Especially when it comes to shoes. Do I really want these shoes? I have to say we're about tools. That's another story. All right. No laughing. All right. The light of the body is the eye. Therefore, when thy eye is single, aligned with God's perspective, God's, thy whole body is filled with what? But when thy eye is evil, your own sparks, your own light that you kindled or someone else kindled for you, thy body is filled with what? Take heed, therefore, the light that, that you think is darkness, thinking it's light, which is in thee, be not what? Darkness. Got it? So seeing something and saying it's a piece of crap or it's worthless, it's all in the eye of the beholder. How are they seeing it? What is their reference point? What are their, what's their, how are they measuring this? All depends on which light they're being given to it. I know someone who has, someone who had a jewelry shop and they asked me, and said, well, how do I get more income. I've only got one type of jewelry. I said, no, you don't. I said, you take all the things that you've got for the same price, find the best ones, mark them up. The ones that look prettiest, mark them up. And those that don't, keep them the same price. Put them up there, and the next day, all the ones you marked up, sold. 
what people were doing was trying to find the best piece by using what? Price. Because they had no idea. People do that when they go and buy diamonds. They don't look and see, you know, what's the cut, what's the clarity. They don't care about the scintillation. They just, what's the price? They don't know enough about the gems to be able to make a decision. So you look at the price, say, well, that must be good because of the high what? Price. So price dictates it. And marketing uses that to lure people into buying crap by just raising the price and then buying it at crap. Got it? Don't get caught. Don't get tricked. All right. So that's why it's not what it is. If you're going to go buy diamonds, you need to study a little bit about clarity and cut and weight. Or if you're going to go buy gems, understand what the value system is. You don't have to go very far. To Google it. There it is. I studied gemology for nine years, and all of a sudden, the internet comes out. So I'm like, OK, so what good is my certification? Anyways. Anyway, Ephesians 5 and 1, all right? Now, this is a weird statement. Be therefore followers of God as dear children. I'd follow him if I could see him. Uh, you don't see him with your eyeballs. You see him where? In your mind. And that word followers is not followers. Ephesians 5, 1, followers is the word mimites, where we get our word mimic from. In other words, imitate who? Imitate God. Be God imitators. All right, what, what are the characteristics of God I've shown you? He thought it through in his mind before he even what? Began. So does that mean you think before you speak? Yes. But that's so hard for a woman. I don't care. Learn, practice, get better. Nothing worse than opening your mouth and inserting both feet. You're like, oh, why did I say that for? How many of you ever said, oh, I wish I'd never said that? Most men don't have that problem, but women always do. He thought on through his mind before he began. Think before you speak. He thought through his plan before he spoke or commanded. Think before you act. See how it compares with the word before you respond. Before you do something. What does the word say? God submitted himself to his own word from this point on. From Genesis chapter 1 verse 3. He submitted himself to his word from that day forward. And we're not supposed to. He will do nothing contrary to his word. What about us is if we're going to be imitators. We do the same to his word. God magnified his word above his name. We magnify his word above his name. Our name. So the big question is to see if we learned this class, this session. What should we do before we speak or act? Say, say what? Say what? Think. 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 Oh, think. Think before you speak. Think before you act. Go run it through your whole mind before. It, uh, you will save yourself untold amount of sorrow. Does that make sense? So that's light that is darkness. Now you understand that secret, that secret saying. What is that all about? Now you know. Well, Father, I thank you for the greatness of your word. I thank you for each person's life here that they can truly walk in this day and time in your light and in your truth, that their lives may be blessed and protected, and they, Father, can truly prosper and they can be in health and heart and soul and mind to truly be within your shadow. And yet, as you help us, Father, to walk in the footsteps of your firstborn from the dead, arisen and return, Lord Jesus, your anointed. Okay, we ready? Let's let my neighbors know we're here. On a count of three. One, two. You are God's what? Yes. Best. Mwah. Love you.